it is my honor to introduce Dr. Raphael Mishulam. Uh, thank you. Thank you very much indeed. Uh, I'm sorry that I have to give my lecture by Skype rather than by the old-fashioned way, just talking to my colleagues and friends. Allow me to start with something that was published uh, just a few months ago, a paper, a review actually, by uh, George Kunos and Dr. Pacher from NIH. And they say, modulating the endocannabinoid activity may have therapeutic potential in almost all diseases affecting humans. And then he gives a lot of uh, examples. Now, this is a very strong statement. Uh, there, there, it's quite impossible to say something of this sort on dopamine and serotonin. And um, at the beginning, I thought, well, there is something wrong there. No, he's probably uh, right, almost completely right. So I will be discussing most of the things that uh, uh, he mentions there. But allow me to go back a few years ago, uh, just 3,000 years ago. Cannabis for essentially all those things that we use cannabis, namely for recreation as well as for uh, as a medicine. I'm not sure what kind of medicine it was. Most probably they used it for neurological diseases. But uh, they were probably involved in other things as well. Then let us jump over a couple of thousand years and go to Queen Victoria. Oh, yeah. I talked about the Assyrians using uh, the material about uh, uh, 3,000 years ago. And then uh, I would like to mention that Queen Victoria uh, had migraines and her physician used to import cannabis from India to work on, uh, uh, to, to help her with the migraines. Well, surprisingly, that although the compound, the material was known for thousands of years, uh, the chemistry was not uh, well developed. Now, most physicians, most researchers will not do research on mixtures. A mixture may change, the result may differ, so uh, researchers, physicians did very little work on cannabis. Now, this is again strange because morphine had been isolated from uh, opium in the early 19th century and cocaine had been isolated from coca leaves in uh, the middle of the 19th century, and yet cannabis was, from a chemical point of view, a uh, bit of a question mark. Now, we know why this was so. Uh, cannabis is a mixture of uh, probably around 100 cannabinoids, very difficult to isolate by methods that were available in the early uh, 20th century, and therefore, um, the field could not be de could not develop. Uh, in the early 1960s, uh, I thought that maybe we should go back and try to clarify the chemistry of cannabis. So uh, uh, we got some cannabis from the police, actually, cannabis that had been smuggled from the Lebanon, and instead of the burning it, they gave it to us for research. And together with my colleagues, we were able to isolate about a dozen cannabinoids, some of them uh, completely new. Others had been uh, isolated in a crude form, but never their structures were unknown. And we looked at their structures, and uh, we found uh, uh, out of these uh, six, seven, or nine compounds that only one had a, psycho a cause psychoactivity. And uh, that particular one,